Well, hello there, you scrub lords, and welcome back to another episode of Scrub Chats. This is your host, many miles away, and today we're going to be discussing quite a few topics. Uh, first of all, we're going to be going through a quick rundown of what's been happening with my PC over the past few weeks and what my solution is for right now. Uh, and then we will also go over the new Naval Forces test, which I have gameplay running of in the background from yesterday's stream. And then on top of that, we're going to be discussing the new Operation Summer event. And without further ado, let's jump into it. So, the new Naval Forces CBT. I haven't actually had a chance to play the Naval Forces CBT over a period of time. And the reason for that is, well, I've been having a few computer issues. For those of you who've been keeping up on the channel, uh, you'll know that my PC died a few weeks back. Uh, and many of you are probably wondering what the situation is on that one. Well... There's good news and bad news. The bad news is is that Wednesday after my stream with Botan Gaming, uh, I left to go hang out with a friend. I came back, I turned the PC on, and the motherboard that I was using that I had just ordered and put into it for a second time had died again. Basically what had happened originally was I had had a water coolant uh, leak onto my motherboard, onto my original motherboard, which basically... Uh, prevented it from displaying anything. It would not even boot to BIOS. So I ordered a replacement that came in last week, and that one was dead on arrival. It was just... That's why it, it just didn't work. So I had to RMA that one back, send it back to Newegg, got a replacement in, because it was under 30 days, and the replacement also failed within eight or so hours of me installing it. So... I called up one of my friends asking him for suggestions, and it, he came back to me and said, Hey, I've got an extra PC that I have lying around, and I'm not using currently, and it works great. I have it set up for VR, so it would be more than powerful enough for what you're doing. Uh, and so I'll let you borrow it right now, f for right now, while you get your system put together, or put back together in one piece. And so I said, great. And so he brought it over on Thursday, I set it up that night, and, uh, well, this is what I'm recording on right now. Unfortunately, what this means is that none of my templates are there, uh, none of my previous setup is there, uh, the only thing I have is some of the recorded footage off of a separate, uh, connected hard drive that I use to, the, to store all my footage in case I need to, uh, take it with me somewhere, uh, however... None of my Unicorn Review templates are there. None of my Unicorn... The, even Balabolka uh, with uh, UK Daniel is not available to me on this PC. So, the I don't know how long it's going to be, but the Unicorn Reviews are going to be... Have, are going to have to be delayed for a significant period of time, unfortunately. Um, until I get my PC back in action. Uh, what I plan to do with, that, uh, with my PC currently is I'm going to send back the parts that are not working, uh, get a refund for them, and then use that refund money to buy myself a new CPU and this same fr and some RAM, and this same friend uh, who is allowing me to borrow his uh, extra PC is going to allow me to have one of his extra motherboards that will that'll be compatible for that CPU, uh, which is probably going to be an Intel 6600K. Uh, I'll probably get some, uh, like, 16 gigs of RAM for it, and then... I'll go from there and uh, put the PC back together. But that's the plan. Anyways, going back to the Naval Forces test, I had a chance to play with uh, Iron Armenian, Abanovsky, and Weeby yesterday uh, in a live stream. And uh, this was a really fun event, actually. Uh, I haven't, again, I actually haven't been able to play destroyers since before the Fletcher was introduced. Uh, the last time I got to play it was on the dev server, I believe, and uh, that was a lot of fun. Uh, the, the, with this new patch, they introduced a new hydrodynamic system, uh, a new aiming system, and a new, uh, what else was it? Oh yeah, and some radio-guided shells, or uh, radio-fused shells, basically allowing us to use airburst. Which I thought was really cool. Uh, the the new aiming system and the new hydrodynamics uh, are are really felt. Uh, it took me a, it took me a little while to get used to the new aiming system, especially in RB because it's not as simple as it is in arcade. However, it was still pretty cool. 
uh, and I and I really quite enjoyed it. So the the new aiming system, which I quite like again, uh, is based off of the way that gunnery worked during the Second World War, and that is the fire directors would give an approximate range to target, you'd fire a couple of ranging shots, you'd, you'd fire long, you'd fire short, and then you would dial in your gunners through continuous fire. And they've done their very best to replicate that with this new system. The idea being that you select a target, your fire directors give an approximate range to the target in question. You fire a, a you fire a barrage of ranging shots. When three shots have hit near the target, then it gives you an updated firing solution, and then you continue to update that firing solution as you fire at the target, uh, prompting the director through by pressing your middle mouse button or whatever button you use to uh, select the target to update the fire solution every so often. So as you close the range on a target, you have to constantly update the fire solution to make sure that your shells will actually land where you want them to. If you don't do that, then your shells will start to go long and high over the target. So it's important to constantly update that solution and, and, and keep the fire going on a singular target, which allows you to, again, deal more damage. I think it's a pretty cool system, honestly. And I think it's it's awesome that uh, that Gaijin are trying to make an attempt to not only fuse historical accuracy but to make it fun. Like I, initially, I was thinking that this uh, this new aiming system would lead to really really boring gameplay, but it's really not. I mean, I, maybe it's uh, I imagine that a lot of people aren't really going to like the new aiming system initially because they're used to the older aiming system where you're controlling everything manually. And I think this is a far better system, especially when you're talking about engaging at longer ranges, because engaging at long ranges with the older system was nigh on impossible. You needed to get within very close range of the target in order to effectively be able to hit a uh, to hit an enemy ship. Nowadays, that's not as necessary. Nowadays, you can engage ships from a long distance, and this system allows you to do so. With the new hydrodynamics system, however, I didn't really notice as much of a difference. I was reading back through it the other night, and it looks like this new hydrodynamics system is going to allow you to... But yeah, this new hydrodynamics system is supposed to allow a greater range of movement with the ships, especially in the, uh, in the rolling aspect. So nowadays, if you pull too tight of a turn, it's entirely possible if your ship is too top heavy to roll the ship over and capsize your own ship, which I didn't, I never experienced while I was playing. I didn't think I ever got up to enough speed to do that, but it's possible now, uh, which I think is pretty cool. And on top of that, the last thing I really wanted to quickly talk about here was the introduction of airburst rounds for ships, which I think is fantastic. I was watching back through some of my, uh, through some of the chat on some of my stream yesterday, and some people were asking me what's the deal with, uh, on the Fletcher at least, with two HE shells. And one of them is your standard contact fuse HE, the other one is your anti-aircraft variable time fuse HE. And the US 5-inch guns were some of the first to get these variable time fuse HE rounds. And basically what the VT fuse, all it is, is a, it's a miniature radar fitted in the nose of the shell, that sends out radar signals as it's flying through the air, and as soon as it gets a return back from an object, say an airplane, it detonates an optimal distance from the target, and uh, it, it basically fills the air with shrapnel, uh, thereby damaging the aircraft and leading to some very, very effective fire. Now that they're added in for destroyers, it makes them, especially the Fletcher, it makes them all the more effective against dealing with air threats, which is something that a lot of the other destroyers, frankly, well, struggle with. Uh, the the Germans also have a uh, an air burst round. Um, I am not sure if, due to game mechanics, it works the same way as the AAVT. Uh, however, the, the Germans required their fuses to be set manually, so you had to know the altitude at which the aircraft was flying, and if the aircraft was constantly changing its altitude, going in uh, strange patterns and zigzags and so on, it was very difficult to ascertain the range or the effective altitude at which the this shell should explode. So it made that process a lot more involved for the Germans, whereas the Americans could simply see the airplane, uh, give, a, give a decent amount of lead, 
and start firing shells into the general vicinity, and as soon as the shell got close enough, it would start detonating, and then they knew, okay, just hold that lead. So for the Americans, it gave, it gave them a significant advantage when it came to putting out large amounts of anti-aircraft fire, especially from their destroyers, which were, and the U.S. destroyers, and U.S. ships in general, starting mid to late World War II, the U.S. Navy put a lot of emphasis on anti-aircraft fire. You see that in their battleships, you see that in their cruisers, you see that in their destroyers, especially. So, I think this is a really, really interesting system. I'm glad to see that it's finally in the game, and I can't wait to see more of that. As for some of the newer ships, so I, I got to play the Fletcher for the first time. That was a lot of fun. Uh, the Yagumo was pretty cool. I got to play one game in it, and, uh, it was, it wasn't, I didn't get any kills with it, but it wasn't bad. The Yagumo only has HE shells, it doesn't have any anti-aircraft shells, and it doesn't have any AP shells, which sounds like kind of a problem. Again, I didn't get very many kills with it, but I got a lot of assists, so I was dealing damage, I just wasn't destroying enemy ships. Maybe that's down to my crappy aiming, maybe that's down to me just simply not quite understanding the most efficient way to destroy ships yet, but I imagine that'll probably improve over time. The German ship, however, was okay. It wasn't bad, but it wasn't great either. The 128 millimeter guns on it uh, deliver a lot of firepower. However, the fact that they're in single mounts and they're open, the elements, leaves them kind of vulnerable to airburst rounds. On top of that, it leaves them vulnerable to being strafed by aircraft. The anti-aircraft defenses on the ship are not particularly good. Although, again, you do have the airburst rounds on it if you need them. I don't know, I, w I simply wasn't impre as impressed with it as I was the Fletcher. Granted, the Fletcher is a much, much later design, and it is a late, uh, uh, sort of late war destroyer, whereas the, the German destroyer, the Z-20, is a 1936 design. So, take that for what you will. I didn't really play the Tribal Class or the Project 7C, because I kind of already played those, and I kind of knew how they already... So, I wasn't... I didn't really bother playing them. The the three that I played was Fletcher, Yugumo, and Z-20. So, those three ships, a lot of fun to play. Highly recommend them. And if you haven't tried out the naval testing yet, I suggest you do. It's it's quite fun right now. It's, it, it's done a real turnaround since about six months ago, where it was obscenely boring so i'm glad to see gaijin is going in this direction i would like to see much much bigger ships i'd like to see them try it out at the very least if the if it doesn't work out and the community decides they don't want it let the community decide so that's the way i look at it so overall destroyer is pretty good so far definitely need some development time put into them but they're they're going in the right direction at least i think so any case let's look at the Operation Summer event vehicles, which have just been announced, and what I think about them. So, Operation Summer. This is nothing really new. They've done this a couple years in a row. And for those of you who are relatively new to the game and relatively new to the channel and are kind of wondering what this whole Operation Summer thing is, it's an opportunity to earn up to four rare vehicles. And normally the way you would do this is you would go into special events, you'd grind out a bunch of milestones for yourself, and then you would unlock the vehicles after a period of time. However, that's not necessarily the way they're doing things this time around. This time around, they're allowing us to, to achieve these events and achieve these vehicles in random battles, which is really, really cool. And I know a lot of people were very, very excited about that, because what that means is, is that people can play their favorite vehicles without having to wait for a special event to come around for those vehicles to be available. Now, granted, this is not available for all tiers. This is only available from tiers 3 to 5, so you can't play your Panzer 4 F2, try and get these tasks completed. In addition, Gaijin are also pushing for a community-wide set of goals to further uh, push people to complete these tasks and so with every set of milestones that we're going to get special rewards so we've already hit the first milestone as of the time i've, I've made this video and that is for the 77 percent rp booster for seven battles so everybody's going to get one of those the next one is going to be uh the title follow me comrades and then the next one is going to be a unique player icon after that we're going to get a Panzerfaust 60 decoration and the symbol of italy decal so, with every set of milestones we get, we're going to get more stuff. In addition, let me talk about the four vehicles real quick, because that's what main focus was going to be on this one. For tanks, we've got the Panzer Speerwagen, which is a... Base, it's the same hull as the Puma, but with the turret removed and the Pac-40 anti-tank gun mounted on it. So, that's going to be kind of interesting. It's going to be a fast little tank destroyer. Uh, not very good traverse left or right, but it might deliver some interesting gameplay. So, we'll have to wait and see. Uh, and then the 
up the, the further up the line, the second vehicle you can earn, and the tougher one to earn, is going to be the Type 65 SPAA, which is a T-34 with a specialized turret plopped onto it, mounting twin 37mm anti-aircraft guns. And this Type 65 AA has actually been floating around on the Chinese server for quite some time, which is pretty cool. So now that we're getting that in here, much like the Type 62, like last time, that'll hopefully give the Russians some slightly better SPAA capabilities. The Type 65 SPAA, however, seems to struggle f with a lot of, uh, I guess we should say ammo issues. It only It's only got 24 magazines total. So... You're not going to have a lot of ammunition to shoot at enemy aircraft. Although, considering how little time people spend in, tend to spend in SPAA shooting at airplanes, I doubt it'll matter all that much. For aircraft, we've got P-43A1 for the USA, and the P-43 Lancer uh, was designed as a high-altitude interceptor, and it later was developed into the P-47 that we already have in-game. It, it was a very fast aircraft for its time, according to the website here. I'm just kind of summarizing this off of the website. If you really want to go read more about it, you can go and read its devlog post. However, we're going to have it in game here, and that's going to be the very first aircraft that you can unlock. The second aircraft you can unlock is the KI-94-2, which is a sort of prototype high-altitude interceptor that the Japanese were putting together to try and combat the B-29 threat. Well, what do you have to do in order to unlock these vehicles? Well, you've got two tiers of vehicles. You've got the Panzer Schwerwagen and the P-43 in the first tier, the Type 65 AA and the K-94 in the second tier. For the first tier, in order to unlock SDKFZ-234 and the P-43, you have to complete seven marks of distinction, one set for tanks, one set for planes. So, seven for tanks, seven for planes, in order to unlock the first tier. It's the same thing at Tier 2, except instead of 7, you have to get 13 marks of distinction. Alright, Miles, stop wandering around and get to the point. Okay, so the point is, in order to unlock these vehicles, you have to complete these marks of distinction. In order to complete the marks of distinction, you have to complete 3 of 5 conditions. By the way, I should mention that the event runs until August 28th, 2017, so... If you're watching this from July 30th, 2017, you've got about a month in order to get all of these vehicles. So you've got plenty of time, and so you can afford to miss pretty much up to two weeks. For the tankers, you have to destroy 40 vehicles in arcade, 20 vehicles in RB, and 13 vehicles in sim. For the achievement, you have to get the achievement supporting fire with, with a squad mate five times. And just so you guys know, a quick tip on supporting fire, the best way to do it from what I've heard is to have, at least in tanks, is to have one guy firing HE at a target and then the other guy finishing him off. The guy who's trying to get supporting fires, load up a bunch of HE, fire it at the enemy tanks, make sure you have your buddy there to support you. Do it that way. From what I've heard, that's the best way to do it. Achieve a score of 2,000 or in eight battles or more, uh, four battles in RB or SB. Uh, you have to win 10 battles with an activity of 70% or more, so you, you can't just sit there and win the battle. You actually have to participate in it and do a significant portion of, uh, of the carrying the team in order to achieve that. Uh, and you have to destroy 11, 6, or 4 enemies in one battle. 11 in arcade, 6 in RB, 4 in simulate, whilst controlling ground vehicles. So you can't just, you can't go into a simulator tank battle, jump into an airplane, and bomb the enemy tanks, and, and get credit for the tanker one. Like I said, you only have to complete three of these, and this is per day. So, you can get supporting fires, uh, win 10 battles, and destroy, if you're playing RB, destroy 6 enemies in one battle. And then you get one. And you get a market distinction. And then, like I said, you can only get one of these per day, so it's going to be a certain amount of time before you can actually unlock the first tier of vehicles. For pilots, destroy 30, 15, and 10 enemy vehicles in arcade, RB, and SB, respectively. Uh, supporting fire, I'm not exactly sure how the, the best way to do that. I guess shoot at somebody a little bit and then have uh, and then have somebody else finish them off for you in your squad mate. Supporting fire, by the way, only works if a squad mate actually gets the kill and you've dealt damage to them. Uh, achieve a score of 2,000 or more in seven battles, uh, four battles in RB or SB, so not a, one less than tanks. Uh, win 10 battles, activity 60% or more. Shouldn't be too difficult to do, and destroy 11, 3, and 2 enemies in one battle whilst controlling aircraft. Word of advice though, by the way, for pilots, I know that this really threw off some people, this event does not include the ability to earn these tasks through playing enduring confrontation. So if you are a sim pilot and you want to achieve these uh, conditions in simulator, you need to play tank simulator battles and fly on the air. If you try and do it in enduring confrontation, it will not count. Keep that in mind when you are playing your aircraft in sim 
and trying to get these events for RB don't worry about it as long as you're not playing in a in like the naval event or the uh, enduring confrontation it will count so I hope that has cleared up some of the confusion so again you need to get seven for the first you need to get seven marks of distinction for the first tier and then you need to get 13 marks of distinction for the second tier of vehicles. And in order to complete each one of these marks of distinction, you have to complete three of five tasks per day. And again, you can miss quite a few days, and this event runs from July the 28th. I'm recording this on the 29th. It goes all the way until August 28th. So you've got a month for, I think, for the marks of distinction. If you're dedicated and you, and you just grind it all out and get it done, you can get it done in under two weeks. So you got quite a bit of time. I wouldn't worry about it too much. So without further ado, I hope you guys have enjoyed this Scrub Chats video covering both the Naval Forces and the upcoming Operation Summer event vehicles. Good luck out there with the event vehicles, and I hope wish all of you the ability to get them. Uh, I am going to be getting them myself, however, I will not need to grind for them as Gaijin will be providing them to me to make a video on as soon as they become available for everybody else. So, without further ado... This has been many miles away. Keep your tracks checked. Keep your bonus in place. Keep around on the tube, and I will see you guys in the next video.